Welcome back for another Tips and Tools Tuesday with your host Anthony Bronner from Hardcore Fab. That's right, in today's video we are going to be making brake lines. And I'm talking specifically about the metal part of your brake lines. If you're needing to do the rubber part, it's probably best just to go ahead and buy that because that's going to be a process that most of us are not going to have the capability of being able to do. So, talking about metal brake lines, it can either be a steel brake line like this one here that you've pre-bought that's already got some ends on it that just doesn't work and you might need to change up one end of it or change the length or something. Or we could be talking about a coil of brake line like this. So the other thing we need to note real quick is that there's a couple different kind of common flares out there. There's a single flare and there's a double flare. Now this one is a single flare. Kind of see it there. Can't get my camera to focus on that real well. But long story short, you have the tube that comes up and then the top of it is just kind of bailed out like this. And the fitting that mates to it just kind of fits down there in that recess. And you have a nut that goes up, tightens it up, yada, yada, yada. So that's your basic single flare. Now on brake lines, brake lines have a lot more pressure in them, so you actually need a double flare. So like this factory line here, there again, single flare, double flare. You can kind of see that there's a little bit bigger, thicker head at the top of that. And the reason why that is there is because this is a double flare. And the way you get the double flare is you have the tube coming up and then instead of flaring it out to begin with we actually kind of collapse the top down on itself a little bit and then we come back in with another process where we actually push that down in and then get our part right there that's actually going to be seated onto the fitting that we're attaching to so now that we kind of got that explained a little bit here let's just jump into it and get started the first thing you're going to need to do this is a tape measure and that's for obvious reasons because you need to know how long to cut the tubing. The cool thing about tape measure is, is it actually is metal so it kind of folds and bends around pretty much like this line right here. This is some copper nickel tubing. I am going to do another video about just this tubing by itself. It's pretty cool stuff so you guys might want to check that out if you're looking to do some of these brake lines. So the next thing you're gonna need is something to cut the tubing with. And that's where this comes in. This is just a plain Jane little tubing cutter that you can buy about anywhere. But I am going to put links down below in the description of this video to all the tools that I'm using, just so that if you guys need a reference point or whatever, you will find it down there. So these are pretty simple to use if you haven't used one before. It's just got a knob on the end that you turn and that pushes down a cutting wheel. Then you just roll this thing around the tube and you're pretty well there. Now the only thing you really need to keep in mind here is if you notice I'm only doing like a quarter of a turn or so of that wheel because if you go and just really push this down it will kink the tube and hold on to it while you're cutting it because when you drop it that'll kink the tube as well. Next thing you're going to need is a flaring tool kit. So this one has anvils from 3 16 to half inch tube so got you covered there on a pretty good variety of tube. Also has a deburring tool in there so that's kind of nice to clean out the inside of the tube. Um, I lost probably this wing nut about 10 years ago or so, so mine's kind of janky redneck with a bolt in there, so that part kind of sucks, so find yourself a new one. There again, links down below in the description for all this stuff. Last tool we're going to need on this deal is just a regular old file. You can use about any of them you want to. We just have to clean up the end of that tube because if you don't have the end of the tube cleaned up real good, it will not flare properly, so keep that in mind. Definitely want one of these. So I usually start this off by putting my tool in the vise and I actually put it upside down. I just use the vise as kind of a third hand. You don't really need a vise. But just go ahead and get my piece chucked in there. This holds everything real good so you can get a file on there and knock down the edge. Go ahead and hit it with the deburring tool while it's there. Then you can go ahead and pop it off and just run the file down the sides a little bit and you're pretty well cleaned up and ready to go. All right, so we're ready to start flaring. We've got to flip our tool back over to the other side, so we got the flare side up. Then we can stick our tubing in. Now at this point, we're not going to be tightening it up real tight. We just kind of want to sit there and hold it because we need to use one of these little anvils here to set our height. And the way you do that is by looking at this little lip from here to there is your gauge to be able to know how far to have the tubing sticking out of the flaring bar. So you just sit it right there on top of the tool and now you can adjust the tubing to match that same height and tighten it down and you're pretty well set. 
Now we just set our anvil right on top of the tube with that little post going inside the tube. And we're ready to grab our yoke. And it just slips right over the flaring bar. Might have to thread it out just a little bit to get it on there. But it's a pretty simple deal. All you got to do is just line up that cone point right down inside the center of that anvil and tighten it up. So if you guys are paying attention, you've probably noticed that I have not lubed the end of this tube in any way, shape, or form. I'm only able to do that because I am using that copper nickel tube back there. That stuff's pretty forgiving, especially when it's the smaller stuff. So that's why I haven't lubed this stuff up. If I was doing a bigger size tube, even of that, I would probably go ahead and lube it up. And you definitely have to do that if you're talking about a steel line or a stainless line or something like that because those have a high tendency to want to split out without having some lube on them. Now, for brake line scenarios, though, you keep in mind that a lot of stuff is not compatible with brake fluid. So the, really the only thing that you can use to lube a brake line is some brake fluid. It doesn't take much to tighten it up. It's pretty easy. You can just flick the wrist and you got it. All you have to really do is watch your anvil, and when it comes down and comes into contact with the flaring bar, we're done with the first part of our double flare. Hey, real quick, if you guys are finding this video informative, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up down below. That helps me out a bunch. And also, if you want to see more videos like this one or follow along with my other builds, hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the bell so you get the notifications when the next video comes out. So now that we've got that first step done, we need to get this anvil out of the way. So we just loosen up our yoke, slide it out of the way, and simply pull off our anvil. Now we take the cone that we used on the end of the yoke to push the anvil down, sit that back in the inside of the tube, and we'll use that to be able to do the second part of our flare. It works just like it did before. We just tighten the handle down and watch it do the work. And it's pretty much as simple as that. Now that we've got that done, we can go ahead and unchuck it out of our tool and check it and see how we did. Of course, like I said before, my tools are kind of janky, so they just kind of fall apart. But they still work and still get the job done. Get this to focus here. You can see that that actually looks like a pretty good flare. Now we can set our nut on there and see how that's actually going to look with the nut. Another important thing to note here is that I am flaring both ends so I can still put the nut on. If we were only doing one side, you definitely want to have that on there first. So there it is, all done. That is ready to go right onto the truck. I am extremely happy with the way that looks. And now we can do the other side.